But firstly, you've been at Harlequins for a couple of months now. How are you getting on your new role? Yeah, it's been really enjoyable. I, I've, I've been here just over three months and it's, um, well, it's exciting, isn't it? Because they're the, the current title holders and we've had a solid start and, um, you know, it's a new, new organisation and uh, an amazing competition. So it's been um, it's been really enjoyable, thanks. Yeah, and you've got a big set of fixtures coming up, uh, Leicester and then into Europe. Pretty exciting time, isn't it? Yeah, and it's kind of this transitioning piece as the internationals finish and our players come back in and we've got a, you know, pretty much a big uh, match against the best team in the Premiership at the moment. And then we roll into Europe, which is always exciting. Yeah, and what about those European fixtures? Cast away and then Cardiff. I suppose it's an opportunity for you guys, isn't it? Yeah, and it's it's um, and also for us, there's, there's really high expectations um, on the back of the Premiership win last year that, you know, we have the capabilities to get to the second stage, which I don't know when when we got there last time. But yeah, there's some. These have been tagged in the calendar. Yeah, I was going to say that you have done pretty well in the challenge. You know, won it a couple of times before. Has it been mentioned as a coaching staff about European and maybe getting a bit higher up into those later knockout stages around April time? Yeah, not necessarily by the by the by the coaches, but the players have a higher expectation as, as you'd expect on the back of last year. So. Um, and, and, and this time of year, as you know, we're just starting to get into the winter and the internationals are finished and we're well and truly into the rugby season. So, um, you know, the health of your roster and the way you're playing rugby, all of those kind of um, add to the, the, the dynamics of European rugby as we, you know, face uh, two pretty good teams home and away, which is always um, exciting. And then, and then the next league in January. So um, but they have been earmarked by the players as something we can, we can target. I'd say there's obviously a wee bit of disappointment as well. I know you weren't around, but last season against Munster and particularly Racing at home, that was nearly a turning point for Harlequin's season. And I suppose in front of their home crowd, they, they want to deliver a big performance in Europe against Cardiff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, momentum can shift within a couple of weeks nearly so um, with, with, with things lining up. But, um, you know, fast forwarding after this Leicester game and then the focus goes on to Europe and then, and then it's, I mean, European rugby is fan fantastic, isn't it? Because it's different. They, they often different styles. Um, often, you know, we, we move countries to play our first game. So all of those all, all of those uh, variations add to uh, what is normally pretty good rugby as well. Uh, and, and as you said, it's an important time of the year for us. You know, hopefully we'll get momentum off last weekend and then playing the, the best team in England. And then we're into Europe. So a pretty good lead in as well. Yeah, and from the outside, it doesn't look as if you've changed too much as far as the brand of rugby at Harlequins. Would that be fair to say? Or have you changed a lot? I just can't see it. No, not at all. I mean, one of the things, the great things about joining this club is they're really clear on their DNA. They're really clear on the way they wanted to play. And so for me, it's about fitting in and trying to add value uh, with regard to that. Um, it, in my opinion, you know, teams with positive intent like Harlequins create a better spectacle and it's, you know, it's always really enjoyable. So, um, you know, you throw Cast in the mix who uh, um, kick the least in the in the French league. Um, you know, they, they like to keep the ball alive. You know, I, I'm anticipating a pretty positive game of rugby. From an Irish perspective, it's always good to know how you're getting on with Jerry Flannery and how he works in the coaching group. What's he like to work with? Well, one of the great things about having Adam Jones and having um, uh, Jerry in the mix is these European games, they, they come to life. You know, we've been speaking about this, this, um, this next two game block in Europe um, as being really important. And it's driven by those two in particular, you know, um, the Irish teams, uh, the Munster in particular, they had a, an amazing track record in Europe. So, you know, they just had a little bit of a little bit more excitement around around that bit. So that's always cool. And you've coached for a long time now, all around the world. How do you assess this current Harlequins team you're in charge of at the moment? How good are they? I, I think to win the to win the title last year, you, you clearly you've got to um, be playing rugby at the right end of the year. Um, I think one of the exciting things about about joining a team like this is some of the players that were unearthed last year um, will be here for a long, long period. Some have been um, earmarked for international honours and that often comes on the back of a team playing really well. So how good are they? I think they're probably at the, the starting point, hopefully, of, of more really good rugby and really good seasons to come. And do you feel extra pressure because they have, they are current champions or is the case take every game as it comes and see what happens? 
and try and get better each week? Uh, not really. My remit doesn't really change. So, you know, I signed well before they won the title and my remit was around, um, you know, enhancing the, the culture and strengthening the academy and making sure we've got a, a good pathway. That didn't change. But what I do have is I have a group of players that have a higher expectation and, um, and that's, that's fantastic. But I don't, I actually don't have the burden of the title either. So I, I come here with a, um, a pretty open mind and also I can ask dumb questions. <laughs> and finally, Marcus Smith, uh, just we can't not chat about him. How good is, he's obviously very good, but what's he like to work with and how, how much better can he get? Oh, he's exceptional. I've only been here a short time and he, he went away for a month, but what you can see is you can see a world-class player being unearthed and also in the, um, in the forming stages. And I think for him, his ability to just, you know, play for England regularly, who knows where he can take his game. Clearly at the premiership level, he's played over 100 games for this club and he's been a key contributor in the title last year. So he's not a... Um, this is not a, um, a, a blip of form or someone who's in a, like a hot streak. This is a kid that can actually play a game, has got a really balanced game and has also got a little bit of X factor in parts of the game that is rare. Brilliant, great stuff and good luck for the weekend. Cheers to both. Thanks, good, appreciate it. Thank you.